Hello friends, welcome here or welcome back to another video. Today I would like to talk to you about how I like to celebrate autumn and bring in the magic of the season to the most mundane and ordinary days. Autumn is my most favourite time of the year. If you've been here for a little while you already know that but there is something so special and magical about this fleeting burst of colour that just envelops everything around me. The days are beginning to get shorter but somehow they seem more vivid, whether through these beautiful bright blue skies and then all these shades of orange and red and russet and brown leaves that are just swirling through the air, or the more moody atmosphere of a grey gloomy drizzly day. There is just such beauty in the transience of this season. But of course, as much as I love to take a whole morning or afternoon, or even in some cases, a full day to bask in the beauty of the season, the reality is that most of us, and myself included, just have teeny tiny pockets of time throughout our days in which we can actually enjoy the season. And I suppose it's in those day-to-day -day really mundane aspects of our life that it becomes really important to romanticise them as much as we can. And it's those little moments that always stick with me and make the whole season seem so magical. So today I'm going to share with you a few things. I have my list already <laughs> of a few things that I like to do throughout the season to bring magic to my days in the smallest of ways. So if that sounds good to you, go ahead and make yourself a warming drink of choice, cosy on up, and let's discuss all things cosy and autumn. The first thing on my list is to spend time in the changing landscape. Autumn has just one of the most beautiful and extreme changes to how it looks throughout the season. The trees change so, so suddenly and with such vibrancy. It is just breathtaking. Not only that, but there's something about an autumnal sunny day that seems so different from a summer one. There's that crispness to the air. It's not too hot, it's not too cold, and you can cozy up in a jumper whilst you're outside. And as much as I know we begrudge the shortening of the days, it does mean that there is a silver lining that you are so much more likely to get to see a sunrise or a sunset throughout your busy day. Day. I don't know about you, but I hardly ever see the sunrise or the sunset in the summertime because it just doesn't coincide with the way that my life works and those times of day. But in the autumn time and then going into the winter, I get to witness the beauty of a sunrise on a regular schedule and it is just the most magical thing and I would so highly encourage you to seek those out whenever you can. The second thing is books. Now you guys know I love books and I love reading. I will link the video that I did for my autumn book recommendations and I think there's also one from last year of some cosy winter specifically I think fantasy reads, um, two recommendations videos. So I will pop those around one after the other on the screen. But books have such a way of transporting you to a magical place. And I love to try and coincide my reading with the time of year. I'm a little bit of a seasonal reader. So if I can line up spooky atmospheric reads for October or really cosy winter wonderland reads for November and December. I'm going to do that and I think it is such a wonderful way to celebrate the season and to interact with other people's imaginings of seasons as you're reading it. So books will always be on my list of how to enjoy any season. The third thing I have on my list is a little bit harder for me to sum up in one or two words, but I suppose it's making an event out of the most everyday things. So for me, I love to light a candle first thing in the morning with my morning coffee. That goes for my days off and also my days at work. If I am sat down on the sofa, as I often am in the morning, with a cup of coffee, my breakfast, maybe I'm reading a book, lighting a really special 
specific candle just makes it feel almost like a ritual and I look forward to that so much. Smelling that aroma just makes me feel like I'm ready to start the day on the right foot. Now it doesn't have to be lighting a candle, it could be anything. It could be listening to ambient music or a lovely playlist while you cook dinner or having a specific tea that you make after work. It could be anything, but it's just that act of looking forward to something really small and doable that feels really, really precious. So as I've already said, one of my favorites is to light a candle in the morning. The other one is that when the light starts to fade in the evening, I love to turn on all the fairy lights and turn off all of the overhead lights, turn on all my lamps and just really have a super cozy atmosphere going. And I look forward to that all day long. The fourth one I have on my list, I've summed up as warmth and company, but I also have something a little bit specific, which I'll go into in a little bit. So spending time with loved ones, as we all know, is super, super important, even more so as we're getting into these dark months where everything just feels a little bit heavier for a lot of us. So spending time with those that we care about becomes so much more important. And that can be having people over to your house, that can be meeting up for a coffee, that can be calling family and friends when you can, even if that's just for 20 minutes on your way home, whatever, just that sense of warmth and community. It also for me looks like blankets. It looks like a physical act of being held in some form. And whilst often a lot of us will get that from the people in our lives, sometimes it's not feasible for whatever reason. And we don't need to go into all of those different reasons, but I know that some of you will resonate with that. And when I was at university, I was quite lonely at times and I lived by myself for a while or I didn't live with people that I was really close to. And so having that act of being held and comforted, I got through different means. One of them was wrapping myself up in a blanket, sometimes hugging a pillow, but oftentimes I had cuddly toys, which I hugged and I have coined the phrase conscious cuddles. <laughs> and this is really just taking a mindful moment whilst you're holding something soft. This can be really good for easing anxiety as well, but it's also just a way to feel really safe and warm and comforted. I have a cuddly pig who I often use when George is not around, but it is just that sense of being held when you need to be held. And sometimes we have to get a little bit creative with that. And so I wanted to share that as weird and slightly vulnerable as that is for me to share. Don't always feel boxed in because you don't have something in your life. Always try and look at things that you do have and make the most of what you have. And from someone who still to this day, despite being surrounded by wonderful people in my life, still benefits from a conscious cuddle every now and then, it is really lovely. <laughs> so moving on from that slightly rogue one to something a bit more normal, I'm going to talk a little bit about scent. So scent is a way that a lot of us remember a certain period of our life, a certain time of year, and we associate different scents and fragrances with different things. I love a nice comforting warming smell for this time of year. So ways that I incorporate that in my day-to-day -day life are, as I previously mentioned, a specific candle. In fact, I'll show you the one that I'm burning this year. This year I have Autumn Morning by DW Home. This is herbal, crisp and musky. Crisp morning ozone glistens over leaves with a zesty blend of citrus infused eucalyptus and spearmint and it smells incredible. It's not too sweet. It's not sweet at all, really. It just has that slight sweetness from the spearmint and that kind of orangey, citrusy scent. But the rest of it is really fresh and lovely. And it always makes me think of a cold, crisp morning walk, which I suppose makes sense with it being called autumn morning. But you could also choose to have a specific diffuser in your house, your room. You could choose a specific perfume to wear every day. And that again links into the idea of a ritual of putting on 
your morning perfume or it could be having a simmer pot the act of making a simmer pot is really really fun and it's lovely to do if you're having friends over or if you want to make it with a friend and then the next two that i have written down for this category are things which i think are so easy to integrate and again makes this idea of these really really mundane moments feeling special so the first one i have is to change your soap to something that reminds you of the season and then the second one is that i recently changed my cleaning products so i like to use a concentrated solution and then it's one that you water down and it lasts for a really long time but i've got one which i think is called winter morning but it smells incredible it smells like fresh apples and cinnamon and a bit of vanilla and it makes me so happy to clean my kitchen, my bathroom, anything. I'm obsessed with it. And the best thing is that it's something that I do every single day. I integrate that into my routine already. And now I get to experience the most incredible seasonal scent as I do it. It's just the best. And I think it's so, so easy to have that, to implement that in your daily routine. The next one is one which so many people will be mentioning, and that is to take part in seasonal activities whenever you can. So things like apple picking, going to pumpkin patches, those are kind of the big two, which I see so many people doing. However, there are smaller things that you can do, which I think is important to recognize. If you're lucky enough to have a garden, there's so much that needs to be done in the autumn season. It's also harvest time at this time of year, and that is just so, so exciting. Again, keeping on that theme of more outdoor activities, I love to go for walks at this time of year. I think it's absolutely beautiful and again just spending time in this changing landscape is one of my favorite things to do and you can integrate little activities in that as well you can try and spot different wildlife you can try and identify mushrooms and birds and different trees and collect leaves as well if you want to press them and use it in some crafting which brings me on to doing more seasonal indoor activities too i feel like in the summertime staying indoors is really really frowned upon but in the autumn and the winter time, we can fully enjoy indoor activities. I do so much more baking and crafting and writing and reading indoors in these wonderful cozy atmospheres at this time of year. Number seven is to eat in season when you can. So where I am in the UK, I love to eat a lot more root vegetables, squash, apples and pears are in season and so i end up making a lot of soups and stews and pumpkin curries and all of these delicious foods which you can really only enjoy for quite a short amount of time whilst these things are in season so it makes cooking more exciting because i'm getting to try new recipes all the time or adjust recipes that i make to include this incredible fresh produce which is here for a limited time only <laughs> and of course that expands to daily coffees or if you get a coffee out you can enjoy pumpkin spice lattes you can enjoy maple flavors in your coffees and it's just really exciting i also have a vanilla and cinnamon brown sugar syrup recipe from a couple of videos ago which i will link if you want to make your own syrup at home if you're like me and you prefer to drink coffee out as a rare treat um, it's really nice to kind of be able to make a really tasty seasonal coffee for yourself at home as well. Next on my list is to make the most of the things you use every day. The things which you don't necessarily even think about, but the things that you see every day because you have to. So I've written down on my list things that I've noticed that I do without even thinking about it, which really make me happy when I see them. So the first one is that I change my bookmark for a really pretty seasonal bookmark. I have a few and most of them are actually just cut down from packaging. So I have one which is made from a pumpkin spice diffuser box, which had just a really gorgeous pattern on the box. 
Another one is from a tea box, a box of tea, which was I think apple and cinnamon, but it's just these really gorgeous patterns which otherwise would get recycled and so I like to cut them out and I use them as my seasonal bookmarks. One of them I even threaded a little bit of ribbon through to give it a little bit of pizzazz and I interact with that item every single day, even multiple times a day and it makes me so happy. I also have that I have a seasonal mug. I have two really for this time of year. This one makes me think of autumn because it has a little autumnal critter, it has a little hedgehog and I also have one for the autumn and the winter time which has trees on it as well which I love using. Again I use these every single day. I recently did a little artwork DIY so that when I walk into my living room I sit down on my sofa and I look up and I see my gallery wall, there's a tiny little nod towards the autumn spooky season and that makes me so happy. As I already mentioned, I made a coffee syrup so when I make my morning coffee, like today, I get to put a fun syrup in it instead of just a little bit of sugar. And then I've also really been enjoying painting my nails. I don't have anything on at the moment but if you've noticed either of the nail polishes I've been wearing recently, they are both from Essie, from their Expressy line. And the red one is called Bolt and Be Bold. And the burgundy one is called Not So Loki. I see my hands all the time. I see my nails all the time. And the amount of joy that I have had looking down and seeing one of these autumnal colors on them has been wonderful, has been so much more than I could have anticipated and I'm going to continue to do this. The last thing on my list is to record the season. Whether you love it or whether you dislike it immensely, recording these changes, recording your approach to it can be so wonderful. Whether you're doing that through artwork, photography, writing, journaling, poetry, filming, whatever it might be, there are so many incredible ways to record this wonderful time of the year. You could be doing little craft projects like this one, you could be a knitter and be experimenting using different colourways. There's so many different ways that you can record this season and I just find that it helps me be present and be in the moment and just enjoy the season for what it is. Oh, and I think that concludes everything on my list. That was a lot of rambling and I need a quick drink to refresh my palate. Hmm. Anyway, I hope at least some of those tips resonated with you. I hope they were good reminders for those of you who already knew them, but perhaps you've learned something new or got some new ideas as well. The lighting is so strange because of where the sun is coming in through the window. I feel like I'm half in shade. That's so strange. Let me see if I can fix that for the end of the video. If you have any top tips of your own to share, please do so. I am always on the hunt for more ways to enjoy my most favourite season of the year and I'm sure people watching would also appreciate your insights so please leave them down below if you feel so inclined. I hope you're all having a wonderful autumnal season so far and I hope October has been treating you well wherever you are. Take care friends and I will see you very soon in another video. Goodbye!